So in the first tutorial of this series, I was using Linux Ubuntu. So I went through the process of installing Celery, Rabbit, MQ, and we created a small Django project and then tested the stack by running a task. So in this tutorial, I just wanted to follow this up by installing RabbitMQ on Windows and getting everything working on Windows environment. So we're going to install Erlang, which is a, a programming language that's needed for RabbitMQs. Go ahead and install RabbitMQ. Just talk a little bit about some of the little quirks that might happen. And then we're going to start a Celery project in Django. So see the link in the description if you just want to follow the Django project that I created in the first tutorial. And then basically we put that all together, test the stack by starting the servers and starting Celery and then just run a simple task. So the aim here, as you might imagine, is just to get everything working on Windows so that if you want to continue working in this Celery series in Windows, you can. So I wanted to give you an installation guide on how to install RabbitMQ on Windows for those who want to follow the Celery series using a Windows operating system. So this is going to be a two-step process. First of all, we need to install Erlang, a programming language, and then we go ahead and install RabbitMQ. So from the install guide, there is a link here to the Erlang OTP version tree. So head over to that and then select, in this case, the Windows 64 bit. So I'm going to be utilizing the OTP 2303 Windows 64. So go ahead and download that. Looks like I've already got an installation running. So I'll pause that. So hopefully this will be a straightforward process for you. We're just going to use the default settings here. So we're just going to press next, uh, install into the programs. I am logged in as an admin that can affect the installation. So just make sure you're logged in as admin. So I just press next and install. Okay. So now we're going to go ahead and download rabbit and So here you can see that we're going to use the installer for windows system. Um, this is 3.8.6. So what you might find when you download this package, it won't open simply by just um, double clicking on it. You might need to right click on the file and open as administrator to get the actual installation process working or started. So let's go ahead now. We're going to just install the defaults here. So press next and install it in the default directory. Of course, you can change that. Or oh, it looks like other installations are now trying to run. So I press install. Okay, so now RabbitMQ is installed. Let's just do this manually. You can access RabbitMQ from the start. So you'll be able to navigate down and there looks like an icon there that says to start the server, but that doesn't necessarily start the server correctly. So I'm going to keep this super simple. Let's head over to the C drive, program files, RabbitMQ server, and then go into the RabbitMQ server folder and then the S bin. In, inside of here, you've got the bat files. So what we can do is we can right click on the RabbitMQ server and run as administrator. So this is going to bring up a new terminal window. And that's actually then going to start the RabbitMQ server. So now you can see that this is working OK. So in the previous tutorial or the first tutorial in the Celery series, I went through the basic process of creating a Celery instance and running that instance. And that was all on Ubuntu. So I've copied the code over from GitHub that we completed or the Django project we completed in that first tutorial. And now I'm just going to, going to start a virtual machine and get the actual package or the software up and running. So you can skip this section if you want to just do this yourself, but I'm just going to create a virtual machine, install some packages so that we can get this project working. So first of all, um, I'm going to start off by installing the virtual machine. I then run the, uh, or the activate the virtual machine and then go ahead and pip install Django. Of course, I should have chained that because I want to now pip install Celery. Of 
Okay, so now we're at the point where we have all the packages that we need. Uh, so we should now just be able to run the server, just to check to see if it's working. Yep, okay, so everything is absolutely fine. So just to quickly recap, this is a really simple project here. We've got the main project folder here and an app project. So inside of our project, we have a celery file and you can see that we've created a very simple instance here called proj. So we're going to run that and we're using the auto discover to discover the tasks that we have here. And we have a very simple task here in this app one called add. Okay, so here's the important bit for Windows users. So in the first tutorial, I gave this command here, Celery, uh, using the A switch. Proj is the project instance or the Celery instance. We're going to start the worker or the Celery worker here. And that works absolutely okay in Ubuntu. But with Windows, there's a little quirk here that we need to also include. And that's dash dash pull and then equals solo. So without that, what we'll find is that when we pass over tasks to Celery to run, it won't run the task. They just stay in the uh, initial stage. So we run that and you can now see that we have everything working. Um, we can see that we can actually connect this is obviously the important thing. We're connecting to RabbitMQ right there. So everything is working. So let's just finalize this by testing to see if we can pass or start a task or get Celery to complete a task. So let's just open up a new terminal and we'll just go into the shell. So we just need to import first. So from app one uh, dot, it was tasks and the task we want to import is add. So we've got the task now. So let's just run this task so add dot delay and then we're just going to add these two numbers together so we send that off and we get our async result and if we go back into celery you can see that it succeeded uh, in 0, 0.0 seconds and we get a result which was 4 2 plus 2 is 4 apologies just as a final note if you do have a problem and fix it if you can leave a comment, that would be great because others may have a similar problem.